Transfigured on the mount, O Christ our God. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Be Transfigured, where we invite you to live a new life in Christ. We pray that this episode is a blessing to you and will inspire you to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ. We invite you to join us for worship or study at the St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Cathedral in Tarpon Springs, Florida, where visitors are always welcome. We'll be back in a few moments to share some more information about our ministry. My brothers and sisters, today is the third Sunday of Lent. We are halfway through the Great Fast. Actually, yesterday was the official halfway point. That was 20 days. Today's the 21st day. Close enough. And I want to share with you today what I believe I have come to understand is very well might be the hardest part about being a Christian. It isn't the fasting. It isn't the coming to church. That's even, this is even harder than coming to church. It's harder than not sinning. It is harder than loving our enemies. I have found, my brothers and sisters, that the hardest part about being a Christian is two small words, free will. Now, I'm not talking about our free will. We use our free will all the time very easily, and we do it to sin all the time. In fact, St. Paul reminded us, all things are lawful. Not all things are helpful, he said, but all things are lawful. We have the free will to do whatever we want. That's the easy part. But in this morning's gospel, Christ says, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Christ is allowing us, my brothers and sisters, to use our free will. He doesn't force anyone to come into heaven. He doesn't force any of us to love him. But that's not the difficult part about free will. I have found in my life that the most difficult part about being a Christian is allowing other people to use their free will. Think about it for a moment. How many times do we in our own mind, we get frustrated, we get angry, we may even get hurt or offended when someone does something we don't want them to do? It could be anything. The most obvious experience is when the people do something against us. They say something to us, they do something to us, they say something about us, and we get hurt and we get offended and we get angry. How dare people say and do those things? If only they were as holy as we were. I mean, we don't say those words, but we think them. And then there's that little thing called free will. because we get so wrapped up into our own righteousness that we forget that God has given other people free will as well, not just us. Other people, my brothers and sisters, hear the same message in this morning's gospel. When Christ says, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. We are here today, we've taken Christ up on his offer. Every one of you could have been someplace else today. I had to be here, we know that. 
But every one of you could have been somewhere else today. You took Christ up on his offer and you used your free will and you came to church. God bless you. But I suggest that the more difficult part is that we also know that we have friends and relatives who did not take Christ up on his offer. We all know at least one or two or maybe more people who have chosen in their life to reject God, to not come to church, to not live the Christian life, to not pick up their cross. And I would suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, how we relate to them is how we experience our own cross. Think about it for a moment. We've chosen to come to church, and <clears throat> if our friends are out having a good time, I understand Tiger Woods is teeing off today at 2 o'clock, so we all have time to get there if you care about golf. However, we've chosen to be here, but in our mind we're thinking, you know what? Shame on them for not coming to church. Shame on this person for not living a certain way. And we struggle and we judge. And this is where free will gets really sticky. Because we try to force other people to live a life they do not want to live. We force them sometimes by guilting them. We force them sometimes by ridiculing them. And sometimes we just in our minds try to force them. through Maybe it's through mental telepathy, I don't know. They need to come to church. They need to come to church. Why aren't they coming to church? That frustration that we feel is our own cross. And so when Christ says, if we desire, if we want to use our free will to follow God, deny ourselves. Take the opportunity, Christ says, to get over our own superiority, to get over our own self-righteousness, to stop thinking that we are the most amazing Christians in the world. We are not. And if we think we are, we've lost even more ground. We cannot force anyone to love God. We cannot force anyone to live the Christian life. Why do we spend so much time trying to do it? We spend so much time trying to convince others and we ourselves are sitting and we think we've accomplished everything already. And so Christ says, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. The third part, follow me, is not just walking behind Christ through the gates of heaven, but following in his example. And you see many times in the scriptures where Christ allows people to walk away from him. Now, why do I bring that up today? My brothers and sisters, we are in a constant state of wonderment. How can we bring more people back into our church? How can we go after the people who have walked away? Well, the first thing we have to appreciate is we can't force anyone to come back into the church. All we can do is we can say, if you desire to follow Christ, our cathedral is open. Come. 
But Christ also reminds us that we have to take an account, we have to understand how difficult the road is before we encounter the road. He says a builder takes an assessment. He makes, wants to make sure exactly what he's getting into before he begins his project. It says, lest he realize he can't fulfill his job and he looks foolish. In the same way, Christ is reminding us, if you want to follow Christ, it's very difficult. Life is a struggle. The biggest struggle is realizing that other people are going to use their same free will and sometimes against us, but that cannot stop our love for them. It cannot stop our willingness to invite, to forgive, and to live as a family. So many times people come to me in pain, not physical pain so much, but spiritual pain. And the most common thing that we are struggling with, my brothers and sisters, is some kind of broken relationship. Someone said something to me or someone did something to me. Maybe it was last month, maybe it was last year, maybe it was 20 years ago. And I have people ask me, I can't get over it. I just can't get past it. And it gets back to free will. We can't force people to live any other way than they want to live. Just as God will not force us to live in a way that we do not want to live. But if we want to follow Christ, then the cross is here for us. If we want to follow Christ, the life of the Christian struggle, the willingness to give up the world is ripe for the taking. And that's why at the end of the liturgy today, we're going to take the Holy Cross and we're going to process it around the entire church as a reminder of the cost that we are about to engage in. That Christian struggle of love and free will. That's the great opportunity this morning that the gospel has for us. The reminder that Christ said, Assuredly, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God present with power. In just a few moments, we're going to witness the power of God present in the body and blood of Christ. What a great gift that God has given us. Freely, he allows us to choose to follow him. My invitation, my brothers and sisters, to each and every one of you, take God up on his offer. Follow freely in love. And stop trying to convince other people to change their life, to live a certain way, to believe a certain way. Give others the same free will that God has given us and we will finally be able to bring it to the next level and to live as God wants us to live in love and forgiveness and mercy. Glory to God for all things. As far as they could bear it. Be Transfigured is a production of Be Transfigured Ministries in cooperation with the St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Cathedral in Tarpon Springs, Florida. We depend upon your generosity to maintain our ministry. You can make a safe online donation when you visit our website, liveanewlifeinchrist.org.